Welcome to the daily word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the letter to Philemon, verses seven to twenty. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man. And now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I want to keep him with me. So that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel, but I prefer to do nothing without your consent, in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave. But as more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So, if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul. And writing this with my own hand, I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Paul's plea for Anesimus. Philemon was clearly someone from whom it was easy to ask a favor. His house must have been like an oasis, for, as Saint Paul puts it, he had refreshed the hearts of God's people. How wonderful! Paul could have demanded what he wished from Philemon, but he would only humbly request. A gift must be given freely and with goodwill. If it is coerced, it is no gift at all. In Philemon chapter one verse nine, Paul describes himself as Paul the aged and a prisoner of Christ. Now the word for aged is similar to the word for ambassador, so Paul is making a pun and saying, "I am an old ambassador in chains." But it is not the ambassador who is speaking, but the beloved weary father. Paul makes his request in verse ten for Onesimus, the runaway slave. He does not make excuses for him. He admits he was a useless person, but he says now he is useful. The name Onesimus means useful, so that is another pun. It was said of someone that they were so heavenly minded that they were no earthly use. True Christianity makes us heavenly minded and useful at the same time. Paul calls Onesimus the child whom he has begotten in his bonds in prison. To lead someone to Jesus Christ is like giving birth. Indeed, happy is the parent who has a child and who then leads them to eternal life. In verse twelve, "I am sending him back to you" also means to refer a case to. So St. Paul is saying to Philemon. I am referring this case of Onesimus to you, so that you may give a verdict on it that will match the love you ought to have. Paul says Onesimus pays Onesimus the compliment of saying that to send him to Philemon is like sending a bit of his own heart. He is Paul's dim sum son. Then comes the appeal. Paul would have liked to keep Onesimus, but he sends him back to Philemon. For he will do nothing without Philemon's consent. 
Christianity is not intended to help us escape our past and run away from it. It is intended to enable us to face our past and rise above it. Onesimus had run away. Now he must go back, face up to the consequences of what he did, accept them and rise above them. Christianity is never an escape from the past. It is always about victory over it. But Onesimus comes back with a difference. He went away as a heathen slave. Now he comes back as a brother in Christ. It's going to be hard for Philemon to regard a runaway slave as a brother, but that is exactly what Paul demands. If you agree, says Paul, that I am your partner in the work of Christ and that Onesimus is my son in the faith, you must receive him as you would receive myself. Here again is something important. The Christian must welcome back the repentant person who has made a mistake or sinned. Too often we regard the one who has taken the wrong turning in life with suspicion and show that we are never prepared to trust them again. We believe that God can forgive them, but we ourselves find it too difficult. When we have sinned or made a bad mistake, the way back can be very hard, and we would not want to stand before God as the unsympathetic person who made it harder for others. Now, God forgives, but the forgiveness is not free. A price must be paid. And just as Jesus carried the sins of all of us, so there are those who in love are prepared to help pay for the consequences of others' sins. Christianity never entitles us to default on our debts. Onesimus must have stolen from Philemon. Otherwise, how could he have covered the long road to Rome? But Paul writes with his own hand that he will be responsible for Onesimus' crimes. He, Paul, will repay the debt in full. It is interesting to note that Paul was able to pay Onesimus' debts. Apparently, he was not a missionary without finances. Felix kept him prisoner, hoping to get a bribe to let him go in Acts 24:26, and Paul was able to rent a house in Rome. It may be that if he had not chosen to live the life of a missionary, he might have lived a comfortable life. This might be another thing that he gave up for Christ. In verses 19 to 20, Paul speaks with humor. Philemon, you owe your soul to me, for it was I who brought you to Christ. Won't you let me make some profit out of you now? Paul is jokingly saying, Philemon, you got a lot out of me. Let me get something out of you now. Refresh my heart by showing forgiveness. May we also do likewise. Let us have a time of reflection. How do you want to be remembered after you are gone? Has anyone ever forgiven you a great debt? Have you ever helped pay the price for another person's sins? Who do you need to forgive? Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the price for my sins. Help me likewise to help pay the price for others' sins and also to fully forgive them as you have forgiven me. Amen.